ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Nahl, in the 90th ayah of Surah Al-Nahl, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِي The meaning of this ayah is God commands justice, doing good and giving to one's relatives. And he forbids what is obscene, offensive, and aggressive. He admonishes you so that you may take heed. This ayah, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, عنه, the companion of the Prophet And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is one of the most knowledgeable of the Sahaba about the Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ actually told people, he told others to learn the Quran from Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said about this ayah that it is ajma ayah fil Quran. It's the most comprehensive ayah in the Quran. And this is from Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud also said, I know where every single ayah in the Quran was revealed, when it was revealed, and why it was revealed. And he said about this ayah in Surah Al-Nahl, this is the most comprehensive ayah in the Qur'an. Why? Why is this ayah so comprehensive? If we look at this ayah, this ayah is very profound, very powerful, but at the same time, this ayah is very simple. The meanings in this ayah can be translated into any language, and anyone can understand them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He commands three things, He tells us to do three things, and He forbids us from three, three things. He tells us, be just, do good, give to your relatives. He tells us, don't do three things. Obscenity, things that are offensive, and aggression. And you can make it even simpler and say things that are dirty, things that are ugly, and things that are mean. This ayah really doesn't require a lot of commentary or explanation. You don't have to ask a scholar or a sheikh to explain the meaning of this ayah to you. In fact, if we took this ayah to heart and always tried to live by this ayah, we would find that there are very few situations in which we actually have to ask what the right thing to do is. Because this ayah tells us the answer. You should do three things. Be good, excuse me, be just, do good, give to your relatives. Don't be obscene, offensive, or aggressive. Whether... With this has to do with our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. How we practice our religion, how we act with others, how we talk, our family life, our work, our school, how we deal with people we like and people we dislike, this ayah almost always applies. How do we behave in all of these situations? Be just, do good, give to your relatives. What do we not do? Don't be obscene, offensive or aggressive. This ayah applies to everyone, whether they're a man or a woman, whether they're rich or poor, whether they're young or an old, whether they're a housewife, a president, a doctor, an engineer, whether they're illiterate or whether they have PhDs. This ayah applies to everyone in almost any situation. If I want to think about how to live my life in general. How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want me to live my life in general? There are three things. Do three things. Be just. Do good. Give to your relatives. Don't do three things. Don't be obscene, 
offensive or aggressive. Every day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me, every day I wake up, no matter what I'm planning on doing, no matter where I'm planning on going, what should I do in that day? Be just, do good, give to your relatives. Don't be obscene, offensive, or aggressive. If I have to make specific choices in a particular situation, let me think, what option is closer to justice, goodness, and giving to my relatives, and farther away from obscenity, offensiveness, or aggressiveness? And if it doesn't fall into any of those categories, I have the option to do whatever I want. It's not a big deal. There's no limit to the situations in which this ayah applies. There is no limit to the number of examples that we can give to how this ayah, how we can apply this ayah. Because it applies to everyone in every situation. And every person lives a different life and every person deals with different situations. But this ayah applies to almost all of those situations. And in fact, if we look throughout the Quran and the Sunnah, we'll find that almost all of the Quran and Sunnah revolves around the meanings in this ayah. If we look at justice, examples of justice, situations in which we are commanded to be just. First of all, in our religion, the greatest act of justice is saying, La ilaha illallah. There's no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest act of justice is recognizing and worshiping the one who created you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the greatest injustice is giving anyone else a share of the worship and the glory that belongs to him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, In shirka la dhulmun azim. In Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that shirk, I mean shirk, and dividing your worship between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anyone else, la dhulmun azim, it's a grave injustice. But that doesn't mean that we spend all of our lives worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that would be an injustice. It wouldn't be fair. The Sahabi, Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu anhu, and Sahih al-Bukhari wa Muslim, this Sahabi was a young man during the life of the Prophet Sallallahu and he was a very zealous worshiper. He would fast every single day and he would stand the entire night in prayer. And when the Prophet Sallallahu found out what he was doing, he asked him, he, called, he talked to him and asked him about what he was doing. When, the, when he told him what he was doing, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا تفعل صوم وأفتر وقوم ونم He said, don't do that. Fast some days and break your fast on other days. Pray during part of the night and sleep during other parts of the night. But listen to what, how the Prophet Sallallahu explained it to him. He said, فَإِنَّ لِجَسَدِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ Because your body has a claim on you. وَإِنَّ لِعَيْنِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ And your eye has a claim on you. وَإِنَّ لِزَوْجِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ And your wife has a claim on you. وَإِنَّ لِزَوْجِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ And your guest has a claim on you. If you were to spend your entire life fasting and making salah, you would be doing injustice to these other people, even your own body, which has a claim on you. And the Prophet ﷺ advised him to fast three days a month. And Abdullah ibn Amr, because he was so zealous to do and good things, he negotiated with the Prophet ﷺ up to fasting every other day. And Abdullah ibn Amr still wanted to do more than that. But the Prophet ﷺ told him, you can't do more than that. There's no more than that. Yani, even if you, were to, if you were to fast every single day of your life, even though you're doing more acts of worship, it's not more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it doesn't bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's a type of injustice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't love injustice. Justice applies to the words we say. When we talk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَعْجِلُوا When you speak, be just. And saying this is, is bigger than saying when you speak, be truthful. You can be truthful, but you can be unfair. You can mention the good aspects about someone, 
and not mention the bad aspects. Or you can mention something negative about someone, not mention the positive aspect about someone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when you speak, when you talk, be just. And this is above and beyond just not lying. Be just. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَاتْ قُرْبَةً Even if the person you're talking about or speaking on behalf of is a close relative of yours. When we buy and sell or do business or any kind of financial transaction, we're commanded to be just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَوْفُوا الْكَيْلَ وَالْمِيزَانَ بِالْقِسْطِ and set up the scales and the measurements with justice. And this is one of the most important commandments, not only in the Qur'an, but in every single scripture that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever revealed. And part of the message of every prophet that was ever sent to mankind. To be just and fair when you buy and sell and do business with each other and don't cheat. In Sahih Muslim, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, said that the Prophet ﷺ was once going through the marketplace in Medina and there was a man who was selling dates. And the Prophet ﷺ stopped at his stall and put his hand in the dates that he was selling and he noticed that it was, they were soggy, they were wet on the bottom. The Prophet ﷺ said to the man, what's this? He said, it got rained on, the dates got rained on. So the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ غَشَّ فَلَيْسَ مِنَّا and he, who, a person who cheats isn't, doesn't belong to us. He's not one of us. And you think about what the man was doing. He didn't put up a sign that said dry, fresh dates. He didn't lie. He just you know, hid the bad things and put the good things on the top. And despite that, the Prophet said, this is cheating. And someone who does something like this doesn't belong to us. Compare that to a person who lies on their resume or an employer who gives a false job description to someone they're employing or a student who cheats on an exam. The Prophet said about the two parties that are involved in a sale. فَإِنْ صَدَقَ وَبَيَّنَا بُورِكَ لَهُمَا فِي بَيْعِهِمَا If they tell the truth and explain everything, yani there are two things the Prophet said. They tell the truth, they, they're honest, but not just honest, they explain everything. They don't hide anything. The Prophet ﷺ said, if they do that, their transaction will be blessed. In Sahih Muslim and Bukhari, there was a man named uh, Nu'mad ibn Bashir, who was a child in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, and his father gave him some property and excluded the rest of his children. The Prophet ﷺ, when he learned about that, the Prophet ﷺ told him to take it back and the Prophet ﷺ said, أولادكم. He said, fear Allah and be fair to your children. Be just with your children. The Prophet ﷺ said about some wives. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَوْ أَحْسَنْتَ إِلَىٰ إِحْدَاهُنَّ الدَّهْرِ ثُمَّ رَأَتْ مِنْكَ شَيْئًا قَالَتْ مَا رَأَيْتُ مِنْكَ خَيْرًا قَطْ Some wives, yani if you good to them all your life, and then they see one thing they don't like, they'll say, I haven't, you haven't done anything good. You never do anything right. The Prophet ﷺ said that that is one reason they are liable to punishment in the hereafter. Because of what they said. Something that's unfair, unjust. The second commandment in this ayah was to do good. And this is very broad. It means do good things and the things you do, do a good job. Do them in a good way. This applies to your religion as in being a good Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا أَحْسَنَ أَحَدُكُمْ إِسْلَامَهُ فَكُلُّ حَسْنَةٍ يَعْمَلُهَا تُكْتَبُ لَهُ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا إِلَى سَبْعِمِئَةٍ ضِعْفٍ وَكُلُّ سَيِّئَةٍ يَعْمَلُهَا تُكْتَبُ لَهُ بِمِثْلِهَا The Prophet ﷺ said, if one of you becomes a good Muslim, إِذَا أَحْسَنَ أَحَدُكُمْ إِسْلَامَهُ This is from Ihsan, being a good Muslim. He said, every good deed you do will be counted as 10 up to 700 good deeds. And every bad deed you do will be only counted as one. And the Prophet ﷺ that told us that part of Ihsan, doing good, is worshipping Allah in a good way. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَنْ تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى 
Doing good is worshipping Allah as if you can see Him. But even if you can't see Him, know that He can see you. Being a good Muslim means taking your religion seriously, practicing it seriously, learning about it as much as you can. That doing good applies to the things that we say and the way that we say them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna." Say good things to people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Isra said, وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِ يَقُولُوا الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ Say to my servants, they should say things that are better. This is above and beyond just saying things that are good. This means if someone says something bad to you, you respond in a way that's better. Someone says something that's rude or impolite to you, you respond with something that's polite. If someone is polite and respectful to you, you be more polite and more respectful to them. The Prophet ﷺ said, كُلُّ سُلَامَ مِنَ النَّاسِ عَلَيْهِ صَدَقَ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ تَطْضَعُ فِيهِ الشَّمْسِ Every human being is responsible for doing acts of kindness, good deeds, every day. For every, not only every human being, but every joint in their body, every part of their body is responsible for doing a good deed every single day. An act of kindness. And the Prophet ﷺ gave us examples of acts of kindness, acts of doing good. The Prophet ﷺ said, تَعْدِلُوا بَيْنَ اثْنَيْنْ صَدَقَةً Making friends between two people or reconciling between two people who are fighting is an act of kindness. تُعِينُ الرَّجُلَ فِي دَابَّتِهِ فَتَحْمِلُهُ عَلَيْهَا أَوْ تَرْفَعُ لَهُ عَلَيْهَا مَتَاعَهُ صَدَقَةً Helping a person get onto his horse or his camel or his ride or putting his bags on there, helping him put his bags on there for him, that's an act of kindness. Now most of us nowadays we don't ride on camels or horses but the Prophet ﷺ is not limiting the type of acts of goodness. He's giving us many examples. A similar act of kindness would be to help someone across the street. If someone has bags that are heavy for them, help, him, help them carry the bags. Help a person up the, some stairs. Hold a door for someone. If we want, there are, and if we want to know, now also the Prophet ﷺ said, وَكُلُّ خُطْبَةٍ تَمْشِيهَا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ صَدَقَةً And every step you take, Towards prayer and the masjid is an act of kindness. It's a good deed. And picking up litter, picking up trash from the street is an act of kindness. Yani there are no limit to the acts of kindness that we can do. And if we want to prioritize you know, who should we be kind to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us who and is most deserving of our kindness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in Surah An-Nisa, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship Allah and don't give anything or anyone else a share of His worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And do good to your parents. The first recipients of your good should be your parents. وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى And your relatives. وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ Orphans and the poor. وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُوبِ and your neighbor, whether they're related to you or not. وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَمْ And that your companion at your side. That applies to whoever is in your company. Your spouse, your husband, your wife, your co-worker, or your friend who's at your side. وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ And the servants who are under your control. The Prophet ﷺ, this even, but it even applies to animals. The Prophet ﷺ said, in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, that there was a man walking along the desert and he was in severe thirst. And he was able to get, he found a well and he was able to draw some water from the well. But then he said that, that man saw a dog eating the dirt out of thirst. And he, the dog was so thirsty that it was trying to suck the water that might have been absorbed in the dirt. And the man said, that dog is just as thirsty as I was. So the man went down into the well and got some, drew some water and gave it to the dog. And the Prophet ﷺ said, because of that, Allah forgave him. Yani this man yani attained salvation because of his kindness to a dog. (coughs) 
This and it applies in every situation. Anything we do, we should do it in a good way. The Prophet ﷺ said, yani, even when you kill an animal to eat it, you're doing something that's yani, not pleasant. You're actually taking a life. But the Prophet ﷺ said that even when you do that, you do it in a good way. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah katab al ihsana ala kulli shay. Allah has decreed, has commanded that everything be done in a good way. فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْقِتْلَ If you have to kill something, then do it in the best way possible. وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْذَبْحِ If you have to slaughter an animal, then do it in the best way. وَلْيُحِدَّ أَحَدُكُمْ شَفْرَتَهُ وَلْيُرِحْ ذَبِيحَتَهُ And you should sharpen your blade and give rest to the animal that you're slaughtering. Don't use a... Yani, take the time to make the blade sharp just for the animal that's about to die. Even though the animal is about to die, you still don't want to cause it any unnecessary pain and you want to slaughter it in the best way possible. The Prophet ﷺ said, and in Sahih Bukhari and the Muslim also, the Prophet ﷺ, there's a narration that the Prophet ﷺ borrowed a camel from a person and when the time came to pay it back, the Prophet ﷺ gave him back a camel that was better than the one he received. And the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ خِيَارَكُمْ أَحْسَنُكُمْ قَضَاءً The best ones from among you are the ones who pay back in the best way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, even about divorce, and divorce is one of the most unpleasant, unfriendly situations that a person could ever be in. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said even about divorce, الطَّلَاقُ مَرَّتَانِ فَإِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفِ أَوْ تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, keep them in a nice way or let them go in a good way. And even the act of divorce, which is usually a, a, a hostile situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, even when you do that, do it in a good way. The third commandment in the ayah is giving to our relatives. Giving to your relatives, that's obviously and also part of doing good. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this a separate commandment. This is so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this a commandment by itself. This shows us how important and how sacred and holy family ties are. And how important family relationships are. Other types of good that you may do, they may vary from time to time. And you may have a lot of different ways to do them, a lot of different options to choose from. Tomorrow you may fast, the next day pick up some litter from the street, the next day help your neighbor take out the trash, the next day make salat al-duha, the next day learn a surah from the Qur'an. There are many options when it comes to doing general good. But giving to your relatives is never optional. There's no replacement for that. That is a fundamental commandment. The Prophet ﷺ said, Aisha رضي الله عنه said, the Prophet ﷺ said, إن الرحم معلقة بالعرش that the family ties, the ties of blood, are attached to the throne of God. And they say, من وصلني وصله الله Whoever honors me, whoever keeps their relationship with me, may Allah keep their relation, his relationship with them. ومن قطعني قطعه الله And whoever breaks off my relation, their relationship with me, may Allah break off his relationship with them. And in another wording, narrated by Abu Hurairah in Sahih al-Bukhari, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself said, Man wasalaki wasaltu. Yani whoever keeps up their relationship with you, I will keep up my relationship with them. Wa man qata'aki qata'atu. And whoever severs their relationship with you, I will sever my relationship with them. And there's a hadith in Sahih Muslim narrated by a man named Amr ibn Abasa. And this man was one of the first people to come from outside Mecca to learn about Islam and hear about the Prophet ﷺ. This was in the very, very earliest days of Islam. And he narrated a long hadith about what happened and what the interaction between him and the Prophet ﷺ. But in part of that hadith, he asked the Prophet ﷺ, who are you and what are you? And the Prophet ﷺ explained to him, I'm a prophet sent by God. The man asked him, well, why did God send you? And the Prophet ﷺ said, 
بصلة الأرحام وكسر وكسر الأوثان. He sent me to maintain family ties and to crush the idols. This is the two things that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. It was the point of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending him. He sent me to preserve family ties and to crush the idols. Now, this is always important for us to remember because sometimes we take our relatives for granted. We assume that they're always going to be there. They're always going to be on my side. I should worry about doing good to other people who I can win over or bring them to my side. But if we're ever doing good, the first people we should start with are the people who are closely related to us. <clears throat> Now, and even if those people aren't kind to us, even if they don't recognize us, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلُ بِالْمُكَافِئِ وَلَكِنْ الْوَاصِلِ الَّذِي إِذَا قَطَعْتَ رَحِمَةً وَصَلَهَا He said, a good relative is not the one who trades you good for good. He's not the one who does good to you when you're nice to him. He's the one, if you boycott him, he's still good to you. He doesn't boycott you. He doesn't cut you off. Now, نَفَعَنَ اللَّهُ وَإِنْيَاكُمْ بِهَدْمِ كِتَابِهِ وَجَعَلَنَا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحْمُ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ وَمَنْ تَبِعَهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينِ The three things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us from in that ayah were الفحشاء, المنكر, and البغي Obscenity, things that are offensive and things that are aggressive or in very simple words, things that are dirty, things that are ugly, and things that are mean. Al-fahsha, any obscenity, what, what does that mean? And the biggest example of obscenity is yani, illicit relationships, fornication or adultery. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described as being obscene or dirty in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا Stay away from zina. It is an obscenity and a bad way to go. But there are words or ways of talking that are obscene as well. And in a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, yani it's a well-known hadith that some Jews came to visit the Prophet ﷺ and they, instead of saying Assalamu Alaikum, they said Assalamu Alaikum. May death be upon you. So Aisha radiallahu anha was sitting there and she responded back to them But she responded in a, a harsh way. There are different wordings about what she said. In one wording she said, وَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّامُ them," Which means, and death and disgrace upon you. When, the, when she said that, the Prophet ﷺ said to her, يَا عَيْشَ لَا تَكُونِ فَاحِشَ He said, he said Aisha, don't be obscene. And all she, she didn't say any, any really dirty words about body parts or physical activities. She said, death and disgrace. But the Prophet ﷺ thought that's an obscene way of talking. That kind of rudeness and vulgarity is an obscene way to talk. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah la inna Allah yumghidul fahish al badi. Allah subhanahu wa taala despises. Allah subhanahu wa taala hates a person who is vulgar and obscene. The second thing that Allah subhanahu wa taala forbade us from is al munkar, things that are offensive, and the greatest act of munkar, the most offensive thing there is, is to deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to ascribe a partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to worship anyone other than the God who created you. But there are many offensive things and we don't want to give examples of bad things like we give examples of good things, but there are actions that everybody knows and recognizes as being offensive. There are ways of talking that everybody recognizes as being offensive. And there are even sounds that are offensive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Luqman, in, uh, min sawtik, inna ankara al-aswati la sawt al-hamir. Luqman said to his son, lower your voice. The most offensive sound is the braying of a donkey. The third thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us from is aggression, being mean. This means trying to hurt someone, yani attacking someone, and trying to put yourself, trying to put them down, put yourself above them. This applies to physical aggression, 
physically trying to kill someone or hurt someone or inflict bodily harm on them, attacking their property, trying to take their property and take it for, your, for yourself. And there's also verbal aggression, which is attacking someone verbally, insulting them, trying to injure them with words you use, mocking them or making fun of them, trying to put them down, or attacking someone's reputation by talking about them behind their back, trying to make them less popular and you more popular. There are many people who may look peaceful and friendly because they don't do any aggressive actions, but with their words, they can do more harm and hurt more people in a much bigger way than people who are aggressive with their bodies. It's very important to understand that this prohibition of aggression also applies to religious aggression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the people who were given the scripture before us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, That the people who were given the scripture before us only split up after they received knowledge out of aggression toward each other. Meaning that the different sects and factions and groups that they divided themselves into, it wasn't because they didn't, have, they didn't understand, it wasn't due to a lack of knowledge or a lack of understanding, or because they actually differed about issues. It was personal hostility. It was personal, a personal agenda. Each group, each leader wanted to have more power, more respect, more authority, than everyone else. And he wanted the others to be followers and look up to him or to his group. Even if you know you're right, you're 100% right, or if you think that you're 100% right, and the other person is 100% wrong, you still, there's no reason for you to be an aggressor. If any human being were ever 100% right, it would be the Prophet Muhammad But despite that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him and told him, Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawaidat al hasana wa jadil hum billati hi ahsan. Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and a nice admonition. Wa jadil hum billati hi ahsan. And if you argue with them, argue with them in a way that is better. Yani if you, even if you're arguing and debating, and we know that the Prophet is right and the others are. Wrong. But Allah SWT said, be better. He didn't just say, do it in a good way. He said, do it in a better way. Meaning if they're rude and mean and aggressive and hostile to you, you be respectful and polite. If they're respectful and polite, you be more respectful and polite. It doesn't mean that you have to compromise your religion or you don't stand up for what you know to be right. You can say this is right and this is wrong. This is what I understand to be the truth and this is what I understand to be wrong. But personal hatred, anger, aggressiveness and hostility to others have nothing to do with that. What we have mentioned are just a few examples of the situations that this ayah applies to. And we could go on and on and we never finish mentioning examples of how this ayah could apply to us. But we can always remember to keep these three commandments and these three prohibitions uppermost in our minds. Do be just, do good, give to your relatives. Don't be obscene, offensive, or aggressive. And no matter how hard we try, we'll never be perfect in what we do. We'll never be able to do all the good things we wish we could do. And we'll always have shortcomings and we'll always make mistakes. We'll always be forgetful from time to time. And perhaps a way for us to make up for those shortcomings is to forgive the shortcomings of others. When we see others who are just as imperfect as we are, we see others who make mistakes, don't try to hold them up to the standards we try to hold ourselves up to. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nur, وَالْيَعْفُ وَالْيَصْفَحُ أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Pardon and forgive. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad wa barak ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita wa barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid.
ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونسألك أن تجعل كل قضاء قضيته لنا خيرا اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحبك